she was always nice to everybody. A woman in Greeley remembered for treating everyone she met with kindness. If you could make her the most mad person in the world, a couple minutes later, she, it'd be like she, it never happened. Her family is now in mourning. A 22-year-old taken by a gunman while she was closing up her family's store this weekend. Tell your kids you love them. I just at the beginning of the day, the end of the day. A new district attorney appointed by Governor Polis vowing to be a big improvement from the last one. Our office is dedicated to fighting for the victims of violent crime. And stolen gas flowing from RTD parking lots. I think that is awful. You go on a trip and you come back in, you don't have any gas. Denver 7 is looking deeper at who's to blame. I mean, this is RTD's property, so they should be responsible. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Andrew Heal. And I'm Shannon Ogden. We're going to begin with a mother in Greeley wanting justice for her 22-year-old daughter. Angie Vega went missing Friday night when she was supposed to be closing up her family's nutrition shop. Police were investigating suspicious activity in the area when they found the shop broken into along with a large amount of blood inside. And then a few hours later, the tragic news that Angie's body was discovered in the back of her car just blocks from the shop. Denver 7's Colette Bordelon is joining us live in Greeley tonight at that store where Angie worked. And Colette, her family's planning a vigil tonight for Angie. That vigil starts in just around an hour, but already people have started showing up here to so show their support for the family. And for the first time, we're hearing from Angie Vega's mother about just how special her daughter was. The balloons and flowers outside of NOCO Nutrition and Gruley don't compare to the smile they're there for. I don't think we really have many pictures that she wouldn't be smiling. Angie Vega loved food, dancing, and making other people happy. Even though she was the shortest of them all, she just seems so strong. Her mom, Virginia Barragan, says 22-year-old Angie was born and raised in Greeley and enjoyed working at NOCO Nutrition, which is owned by her aunt and uncle. She loved <laughs> greeting people and seeing how they would just come in and wishing people to have a good day. And for her younger brother, Angie was an inspiration. She was always nice to everybody. Even if you could make her the most mad person in the world, a couple minutes later, it'd be like she, it never happened. The support seen outside the store, a testament to the person Angie was, and something her mom wishes she could see. And she'd be the one to thank everybody, <laughs> giving everybody a hug because that's how she thank everybody, giving hugs away. A characteristic from a family, still speaking from a place of love. Overall, life is a beautiful place. Hoping everyone knows. Live like there's no tomorrow. There's still good out there. Love <laughs> with all your heart. And finding strength in the smile they miss so much. Greeley police have arrested a suspect in this case, 24-year-old Marcos Vallejos, who's being held on first-degree murder and sexual assault charges. The vigil here at NOCO Nutrition is scheduled to last until 8 tonight, and the public is invited. Live in Greeley. Colette Bordel on Denver 7. Yeah, what a tragedy. All right, Colette, thank you. And along with the death of Angie Vega, it was another deadly weekend here in the Metro. Going in depth tonight, two others were killed and at least nine people were injured in shootings across Denver, Aurora, and Greeley this weekend. One of those shootings, one man was killed, three others injured in Denver's Sunnyside neighborhood. It happened early Sunday morning off West 42nd Avenue. And the man killed has been identified by his family as 41-year-old Tomas Jimenez. I know a lot of neighbors said that there was a party going on at this house that was getting out of hand and it kept escalating and by the time they were ready, to, they were calling the cops, they heard gunfire. I lost my best friend and there's no bringing him back, but justice is what I'm going for. And police have not announced any arrests or possible suspect information. Well, today, Denver police released these new photos of a person of interest in Friday night shooting near an RTD station. Two men were shot near the RTD Sheridan station off West Colfax, and one of them, 35-year-old Nathan Martin, died at the hospital. Officers have not released any other details about the shooting, so if you know anything, please call police. A new district attorney has been appointed in the San Luis Valley. Today, Governor Polis announced Ann E. Kelly will take over as the 12th Judicial DA. Her appointment comes months after multiple Denver 7 investigations into now former San Luis Valley DA Alonzo Payne over questionable plea deals and violations of victims' rights. Payne resigned in July. And Kelly now says she's ready to get the 12th Judicial Office back on track. 
This valley is a really special place and it deserves a prosecutor that cares deeply about the community, that cares about justice, that cares about victims. You deserve a professional prosecutor that will fill the office with professional attorneys that know what they're doing. It's going to take time, but I'm committed to that effort. And Kelly has nearly two decades experience practicing law, including time as a deputy DA in Boulder County. She'll begin her job September 1st. Police have arrested the man accused of stealing at least eight golf bags from DIA. 35 year old Jamison Bradford allegedly stole those bags from the airport over a three week period this summer. He's being held on investigation of theft, totaling about $20,000 or more. And developing tonight, thieves are continuing to target parking lots at RTD stations here in the metro. Now from break-ins to gas theft, Denver 7's Russell Haythorn looking deeper into who's to blame for not keeping these parking lots safe. Based on the complaints we're getting, the Central Park RTD station appears to be ground zero for this kind of theft. I mean, just take a look around what appears to be a large gas stain here, another there. We counted five in this row of the lot alone. I think that is awful. You go on a trip and you come back in. You don't have any gas. Tamara and James just returned from a trip to Florida and were stunned to hear about all the theft. Because we do park here for the protection of our vehicles. So it's convenient to drive our cars here, but if, we, if it's not been, being protected, then we'll have to make other arrangements. The theft is well documented. This video shared with Denver 7 shows gas pouring out of the tank on a Ford Raptor pickup. The owner says it happened while he and his family were recently attending a Rockies game. The first thing I noticed was the smell of gas. So that's well over $150 of gas. The cost to replace his gas tank, a whopping four grand. And it's not just gas theft plaguing these lots. Take a look at this. This went down just today as we were here. This guy apparently stole the bike and backpack of the lady in the blue vest. Denver police arresting him on the spot. The lady in blue got her bike and bag back. I see a lot of cars window broken every night, every night. Lydia Williams works at the airport and says she has no choice but to park here. I have to. Why? Because the gas is too expensive. I can uh, drive every day to the airport and yeah. come back. RTD tells Denver 7 there are more than 20 surveillance cameras at this station alone. But Williams says when her friend's car was recently targeted, police told her the cameras don't always work. They uh, went to the police, the camera don't work. They don't work? No work for years. We pressed RTD on this issue again today. They told us they would look into it. They do uh, all kinds of bus stop here. I mean, this is RTD's property, so they should be responsible. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. A lot of barriers that are both perceived and actual real barriers. Giving everyone a chance to experience Colorado's great outdoors. Thanks to the Outdoor Equity Grant here in Colorado are going to be able to get people outdoors and get them in the field. We're looking deeper at the state's outdoor equity program now that a second round of funding will soon be distributed. Those are some of the barriers that this grant program is trying to break down and um, ensure that all children across Colorado have the same opportunity. Not much to be seen on the radar screen. Instead, it's a whole lot of hot weather coming up this week. Plus, the Broncos' new team president makes his official debut and says he's committed to the three goals. Football fans in future is what you're going to see from me. Supporting football, connecting, engaging with our fans uh, with an eye on the future. Broncos country. Let's ride.